give his presentation. So we might as well uh, start with who's here and uh, uh, so give a listen to uh, um, Lyona Local 607. Uh, Shane is here to uh, present uh, on behalf of the union. And uh, we've worked with this union uh, for quite a while now. Uh, the reason why I think we prefer them is because you know they like to work with native people. They go out of their ways, you know, try to you know help us out. And we just completed a, a construction construction craft worker program a few weeks ago. It really went well, and the trainers trainees really benefit from it. And uh, we look forward to working with them on more uh, training programs. So here. Without further ado, is Shane uh, Page. Chimigwa uh, Chinzegi. I'm going to be honest, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'd like to start off with uh, an introduction. Uh, my name is Shane Fijer. I'm with Lane Indigenous Relations. I originally grew up in Pick Mobert in the 80s and 90s, and then I later transferred to uh, Pace Black First Nation after I got married. So um, faced a lot of barriers in that growing up in Pick Mulbert in the 80s and 90s because no one was out there doing what I'm doing now, talking about opportunities and in the trades and um, transferable skills and how our students that take our, our training gain a valuable uh, diverse skills that are so transferable into everyday life and such and how you can make a lot of money and provide for your family and such. So often people see uh, hashtag generational change on my Facebook or my LinkedIn and I always have people ask me, well what does that even mean, generational change? So generational change is a concept concept that my family proved to uh, to uh, exist and such. So growing up in Peck Mobert, you know, we were very poor in that. We didn't know about all, term, all sorts of uh, economic uh, opportunities and such. So generational change is changing a past socio-economic uh, situation of the past and bringing it to a modern one where we are creating opportunities on all levels whether they be at the administrative level um, right, th right down into the blue collar and for our children and such so I'm part of the loon clan and growing up I was all I was all cool I like to swim anyways so maybe I am a loon clan it wasn't until later on that I discovered that being from the Loon Clan, we see things differently. And uh, that, very, that does translate into what I do now and such. You know, people ask me, like, well, how did you go from a welder to becoming an uh, Indigenous Relations Rep to doing strategic planning and economic development? And I, and I thought to myself, wow. <laughs> Really, how, how did I, you know? Because growing up, I, I didn't go to school for business or anything, but the Creator puts you on this pathway, and uh, it, it's rather unique because I was guided along the way, you know, through my elders, through my ex-wife, you know. She would bring me to some of these events and that where I was getting an apprenticeship, as you will in the ways of business and economic development and such. So it's quite unique, I guess, and like I said, coming from the Loon Clan and that it really translates in that we and we do see things differently and such. So I'll play a, a video about Layuna and uh, it'll go over some of the things that I, I could uh, talk about. Great speed. 
outcomes of humanity. And it's true. But what does it take to build a city? Buildings, streets, houses, hospitals, transit systems? Yes, all of that and more. But nothing would be possible without people. The men and women that make up our communities. The workforce that builds our country. The Laborers International Union of North America, LIUNA, is the most progressive and fastest growing union of workers in the construction, industrial, healthcare, and service sectors of the economy. In Ontario, it represents over 100,000 proud members and retirees across a wide range of industries. Born of strife and struggle, LIUNA members have been uniting for better lives since 1836, when the first recognized laborers' union was established in Philadelphia. Here in Canada, LIUNA Local 506 goes back to 1919. Once a handful of workers, it has grown to more than 8,000 members, representing workers in the industrial, institutional, and commercial sectors of the construction industry. In 1952, Leuna Local 183 was founded, growing from 400 members to 46,000 workers in the heavy civil and residential sectors of the construction industry. Over time, more locals were established, and in 1969, the Ontario Provincial District Council, OPDC, was created to support and oversee the negotiation of province-wide collective agreements, supplying legal and political advice, and to support the interests of the affiliated locals. Leuna's workforce is multicultural, a true reflection of the communities it serves. Over the years, it has grown its strength by welcoming and protecting immigrant workers, who in the 50s and 60s pioneered many jobs, which at times were rejected by other workers who did not want to perform that work. These jobs have now become highly specialized, and the qualifications and expertise of Leuna members are second to none. Leuna represents many workers in all sectors of the construction industry, Industrial, Commercial, and Institutional, ICI, Residential, Roads, Tunnels, Pipeline, Sewer and Water Main, Electrical Power Systems, Demolition, Utilities, and Heavy and Civil Engineering. From residential homes to high-rise condominiums, and from office towers to hospitals, Leuna has it covered. In addition, it represents workers across a wide range of skilled trades like residential handyman, concrete and drain, fence installer, high-rise rod man, house framing, welding, basement forming, tile setting, residential trim, concrete sawing and drilling, refinery work and nuclear refurbishment, and many, many others. Employers everywhere rely on Leuna because they know that its members receive the best and most up-to-date training and that Leuna makes no compromise when it comes to health and safety training. Making sure its members return home from work each and every day is its number one goal. No union in Canada provides more training for its members than Leuna, who offer apprenticeships in brick and stone, cement finishing, and its own Construction Craft Worker, CCW, apprenticeship program in training centers throughout the province. Laborers are more than just laborers. That's why Leuna offers highly skilled training in a wide variety of fields through a comprehensive program for teaching new skills, updating and retraining its workforce with a focus on what is in most demand. Leuna invests in its members who are happy because they enjoy premium wages and one of the best benefit packages in the construction industry. The Laborers' Pension Plan of Central and Eastern Canada is a $6 billion pension fund that maintains a diversified investment portfolio, including a substantial investment in various infrastructure assets across Ontario, providing retirement security for its members through steady and stable growth. Taking part in issues affecting our cities is an important aspect of creating the communities we want to live in. Leuna actively engages its members politically in issues that affect the working people, employing resources to advocate for city building initiatives, and standing up in government for laws and regulations that best represent the interests of society at large. Its efforts to give back and improve the life of its communities are demonstrated in its ongoing support and sponsorships of many charities, fundraising initiatives, and academic scholarships each and every year.
Through the strength of its unity, collective bargaining, and activism, Leuna builds modern infrastructures, keeps Canada competitive, and creates jobs. As the union grows, so do the cities its members live and work in, empowering the working people while improving the lives of everyone in the community. This is the work of Leuna. Feel the power. I want to take this course because uh, it coincides with my forestry diploma. The construction industry is growing, so they need people like us to come into this program, learn these skills, and continue to uh, keep this, this trade going. I believe that we have an untapped potential of uh, workers right here in Canada through our First Nation peoples and communities, and that they can be trained to fill the forecasted shortage, just like we are doing here at our training center in Northwestern Ontario. It's important that we do this type of training. I mean, we touch up on all kinds of training, like uh, compliance space hazard recognition, first aid, traffic control, personal protective equipment, and of course, working at heights. These are all type of safety courses that must be given to our students so that they really understand how hazards can be on the job site. AUTS has partnered with Leona to deliver the training to our pre-apprenticeship uh, participants. So we've been working with them for three years now in this uh, particular endeavor, and uh, we find the partnership to be very, very effective. The training we do outside is probably the most important, and that is hands-on. We take the theory that we've gone through in a classroom setting, and then we bring it and utilize it outside in the field. We build forms, we place concrete, we operate elevated work platforms, we operate forklifts, we operate skid stairs. The instructors were actually really easygoing people, really easygoing. They're well experienced. A lot of them were in the pipeline, uh, building bridges, you know, building foundations. A lot of years of construction, and they're teaching us um, how to do things. So I think we're getting great experience from these teachers. Leadership wasn't a very strong skill that I had, but uh, once I came into this program, I think it really came out. I was able to get comfortable with the guys, uh, talk to them, and excel in that part of my life and my skill sets for sure. Local 607 does have a commitment to First Nation communities and people, uh, whether it be through our training center or through employment opportunities. When Leona signatory contractors perform work on First Nation traditional lands, Leona has always committed to a minimum of 25% First Nation participation in the projects. Yes, I would recommend this course to other First Nation communities. You know, there's a lot of good working First Nation people, a lot of them. Uh, and uh, I think uh, there should be more programs like this for sure. I think the, the training is essential. These are all skills that they can take back to their communities to help build and better themselves. Once they're done their training program, we put them into placements and the employers are always really happy to take them because they've been so well trained through North Star training. Since I uh, graduated from the program, uh, I've been here with Finway, uh, just doing basic uh, labor stuff, uh, working with the carpenters, uh, helping the plumbers move uh, materials, uh, operating machinery such as a skid steer, a forklift, and being safe, uh, practicing uh, safe uh, practices here at work. The, uh, the CCW program trained us in a short period of time to get ready for this type of uh, construction site business here. So I think the uh, CCW program really, really helped people like myself and the other people in the program to get ahead in this type of uh, this type of work. The training is a videos explain a little bit about Layuna and such and going back to that first video 
that video is several years old, uh, so some of those numbers went up. So Layuna now represents over 115,000 members within the Ontario Provincial District Council, and our pension fund is on its way to $8 billion. So we use that money to invest in various infrastructures, projects right across North America. Some of the recent acquisitions were uh, the Ontario on-route centers. Um, Virgin, we partnered with Virgin to uh, buy a casino in Las Vegas, which is the Hard Rock Casino Cafe. And we are looking at very various uh, infrastructure projects right across Northern Ontario. So at Lyona, we are a strong believer in being a partner. And uh, we are one of the only organizations out there to have signed a statement of partnership with AFN. So that is more than just window dressing to, to me and our colleagues at Lyona. You know, it's more than just getting people into the trades and uh, training people. It's also about helping to facilitate economic development, helping to form these uh, joint venture companies and such for the 40 to $60 billion worth of work coming in Northern Ontario. You know, that's a lot, a lot of work. And we have numerous signatory contractors out there that are more than willing and, and happy to help develop these uh, joint ventures, similar to the A6N partnership and such. So that's something I'm very proud that we help to facilitate and work with our partners on. And those services are free. Same thing with community engagement. Those are all free. Career fairs, they're all free. I, I love doing it. I really do. In all honesty, it's easier for me to talk with younger people than a bunch of people my own, <laughs> my own age. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so... Um, yeah, we, we believe in working with our partners and finding uh, creative solutions, how we could work together and uh, looking at things holistically. You know, there's so many different uh, nuances to everything that we do. Like, one thing that the East West High has taught me was when you go from high unemployment to near zero unemployment, there's a lot of barriers created suddenly and childcare is one of them. You know, my grandson had to be raised in, in Thunder Bay by me and my, my wife at the time because there was absolutely no one available within uh, PaySpot to watch my grandson because everybody was working. Everybody was uh, taking the training opportunities that weren't there in the past. So there's a lot of positive problems that come from near zero unemployment. And those are things we have to look at holistically with our partners that we can address. So young families and single parents aren't excluded. That's one example of working with our, our partners. Another great example is the mobile classroom. You know, we could bring that to the job sites, we could bring that to the communities and help deliver programs right on in the communities. This way we're getting a project out of the, all of that training, whether it be a house or, or whatever. So recently we were asked to um, add more uh, training to our um, gambit of training that we offer in 607. So in Southern Ontario, we represent 50,000 carpenters and we're at Local 183 and we train carpentry. So being Canada's largest trade union, I was able to get those training materials with the assistance of um, our, our local leadership so we could work with our partners to develop carpentry here in the north and such. And uh, over at Lyona, there is, we don't believe in artificial barriers, and in fact, we believe in removing barriers. So to join our organization, there is no minimum grade requirement. There is a minimum grade requirement to take an apprenticeship, however, which is grade 10. So. That's one way of working with our, our partners and people that take our training. It's not right to make someone an apprentice when they have years of experience. So being a uh, training or a trade organization, we have that, that ability to make someone a journey person based on their skills and ability. You know, 
we talk with our, our trainers to see where people are at their skills and such. So recently we had um, the graduation class for the CCW for, for KCAX, one of our other partners, one of our many partners. And uh, I explained to two of them that an apprenticeship isn't right for you. So they looked at me a bit sideways, they're like, I come to school every day, I, I try really hard, then I smiled, <laughs> started pulling their, their, uh, their, uh, their pants and that. And I said, well, you already have the skills of a journey person, we're just gonna make you a journey person. And, and you know what, they were shocked. No one ever gave them that opportunity before. You know, it, it was great. I myself, when I, when I joined my unit, I was a, a labor welder back in 2015 to work on the new gold job site. I was given this uh, skills matrix sheet. It asked me which sector I would like to work in. Civil construction, general construction, industrial working, landscaping, masonry, pipeline, railroad, or the power sector. And I honestly had no idea how diverse my unit was. Growing up, I always wondered, how did you get a job with Hydro? And at that time, people didn't want to tell you how you got a job with Hydro. So it was really cool to find out how diverse an organization my unit is. And um, the more skills and ability that you have, the more employable you are. So when we dispatch, we dispatch based on geographical location first, and then skills and ability. But another thing that Lyona has done working with our various partners is in ensuring that Anishinaabe benefit from projects within their traditional territories. So within our collective agreements, we ensure that uh, there's language for Indigenous uh, commitment on, on projects. So that's with uh, OPG and Hydro for transmission and generation. That's in our pipeline. That's in our Sodexo agreements, our ICI, and many more moving forward to make sure that Anishinaabe benefit and have real careers out of these uh, opportunities. And then with us, we believe in real membership for our members and our community members. Your pension and your benefits will follow you from job to job to job as long as they're a Lyona like contractor or affiliate. So, we're very proud that we're so diverse and, and working towards that generational change and real careers. You know, something that's going to follow you. And I, I get this question all the time. I don't want to move from my com my community. And that's perfectly acceptable. It really is because a lot of these projects coming up are going to be within our traditional lands and such. So why not go from building that the mine or the power plant or the, whatever that project is to uh, transitioning into the local workforce. You know, all of these skills are highly transferable. So you can be the one building that mine and then you can be that one working in that mine in the local workforce. Or you could stay with Layuna and do like I did, travel across Canada working on some of these mega projects. It's pretty surreal, you know, that you're working on these monuments, whether whether it be a oil platform in the, the middle of the ocean, a mine out in Saskatchewan, a mine in uh, Emo, or some of these beautiful buildings that are being erected in some of these beautiful hospitals, you know? It's very interesting and such. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know I'm missing a bunch of things, but like I said, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Well, there are several ways that we do training. We work with our, our ISETAs, and then we also do um, apprenticeships on our own. So typically I tell Nishinaabe that you're better off to go through one of our partner ISETAs. This way you will receive uh, supports for for the seven weeks that you're in uh, Thunder Bay 
for the CCW, or four weeks for the cement finisher, or eight weeks for the residential framing. Otherwise, when you come through the front door, like some of our recent grads for our cement finisher last week, you know, they have to come up with that, those expenses that they're gonna incur, you know, living in the city for the four weeks. And we do partner with a lot of our setters on creative solutions to get more people into the trades and more women into the trades. So a lot of our setters are um, offering supports to those community members that went through the interview process and became Layuna apprentices. And there's one gentleman, I'm very proud of this guy, I really am, because every day, or every time I'd show up at K&A and he was working, he would always ask me, well, when are you guys holding apprenticeships? Every single time he saw me, he would always ask me, when are you doing apprenticeships and such? Like I said, I'm extremely proud by that because he was motivated. He really wanted it. And um, when we were going through our list of resumes for our own apprenticeship intake, I brought him in right away. I said, you're first on my list because you clearly have that drive, you know? I, I love that enthusiasm, I really do. And um, I'm very proud that we're a very multicultural organization and we send out um, invites to all of our partners, not only in Anishinaabe organizations, but multicultural centers and, and everything else. Um, is there any other questions? Yes. Okay. So joining the Lyana is has been quite an amazing ride for myself. I, I wish I would have joined uh, 20 years ago. Perhaps my family and I wouldn't have to struggle so many times, and I definitely could have you know, done without all those struggles. I'll be honest. <laughs> So you could go through the front door with a resume like I did, pay the initiation fee once there's work and such, or you could come through by um, working with one of our ISETAs and taking one of our courses. And I always tell our, our apprentices the first week when they take our courses that this is a seven week job interview. You know, everything's gonna be noticed. Our, our trainers are gonna give us feedback. Our, um, our classmates are going to give us feedback. We're all going to notice. And this is a seven-week job interview. So anyone that takes our courses, whether it be cement finisher, CCW, or residential framing, they have that opportunity to join Layuna as a full member. And typically, our partners pay the initiation fee and offer some of those supports, which is great. Like I said, we love working with our partners to come up with creative solutions to remove some of these barriers. And uh, once you're a Layuna member, your pension and your benefits will follow you from job to job. It's not like when I worked at Bombardier and I left Bombardier, my pension and my benefits stopped right then and there. So with us, your, your pension grows every 1,200 hours. That's one pension credit. You only need 30 pension credits to retire. Uh, no penalty at age 55. You know, that's quite extraordinary. Yes, sir. Uh, question about, uh, let's say I come out of the reserve and work under the Yeah. Uh, what happens if I work like, say, with tax? What does that well, with regards to tax, that's. Um, well, that's a gray area, I guess. So if you sign the forms and work is done on your traditional lands, like the within the reserve and such. Like your reserve. Um, as far as I know, as long as the construction work happens on the reserve and you signed all the proper forms, those um, that payroll should be tax-free, but I'm not a professional or an accountant, so I can't give you more than that. That's just my understanding. So 
And that's a, another great thing about being in such a large organization where I don't have to be a know-it-all. You know, we have people that specialize in, in their various roles within Mayana. And that's why during some of our economic development sessions with some of our partners, Mayana Legal is invited along with some of our business uh, managers to interview some of these respective uh, companies and, and such for these joint ventures moving forward. This way they could ans answer a question that one of us might not know that to, to answer. And it's nice to offer insight and such to some of these questions that are raised in that. And um, some of our partners are extremely happy that we're there. In fact, they're over the moon. And then some of these contractors, when uh, we go around the table and we introduce ourselves, you know, I'll mention that they're this training provider, and that's the Tribal Council, and I say I'm with Layana Indigenous Relations to represent the First Nations' best interests and clarify something that might be missed. And they will say well, which company they're from. So some of our, our partners are, are over the moon happy that I'm there. And some of these contractors on that, they ask us to leave straight out. You know, like, what's a union doing here? And it's explain that we're there to offer some guidance or, or insight into some of these terms being uh, pushed around in that. Like I said, all of these uh, services are free by Layana, where I'll do tours in Southern Ontario or attend meetings and such. It's just a way of working with our partners. And um, with regards to your question, well, like I said, there are other people within Lyanna that would be able to answer those questions more thoroughly, or at least CRA. Is there any other questions? Well, Chimi Vach then. Chimi Vach Zegi and Mary and the Board of Slam for this invitation. And uh, sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs>